Hey there, my name is Brian Ewald, and I'm here with the Barber Electronics Tone Press, uh, the newer, smaller footprint, compact design version of Barber's original Tone Press. Uh, I've actually been using these for quite a long time, uh, since 2002, when I think when they first came out. When Dave was working on his original idea for this, uh, most guitar pedal compressors prior to that, uh, the standard two knob design, even though they can sound really cool, um, they tend to squash the tone too much for a lot of players, me included. Uh, they were cool as an effect, but I really couldn't leave it on all the time. It really squashed everything and reduced the dynamic range too much when I dug in. It, everything kind of leveled down too much. Um, and unless you're using it like an effect or, or it's really a part of your tone, obviously there's certain players who have have used the guitar pedal compressors to, to great effect. Uh, Andy Summers and the Police stuff, Jamie Westworm from The Fix, uh, Andy Partridge and Dave Gregory in XTC. There's a lot of songs that that really heavily compressed electric guitar is, is um, you know, key to this tone. Um, but at times when you want to back it off a little bit, there was a, a technique for years called New York drum compression or LA drum compression, depending on who you who you ask. Uh, Dave, uh, aside from being a guitar pedal builder and amp designer, is also a uh, very um, accomplished studio engineer, and so he decided to try to bring that that effect uh, of the what's known as that. New York or LA drum compression into a guitar pedal uh, and uh, back in 2001 when he was first developing the tone press um, called it parallel compression uh, that that term is now pretty widely used in the in the market of, of this technique but what it is what parallel compression does is it it blends in phase corrected uncompressed signal with the compressed signal so with with getting compressed signals and you sometimes especially if you hit it really hard and you lose the transients and you lose the attack and the punch um, the dry signal the uncompressed signal can give you all of that you can still get all of the attack and punch that you get from from your direct signal but then all the benefits of the compressor like bringing in uh, the quieter sounds and letting the sustain hold and all those things that uh, that can be really cool with a compressor for those of you who've spent any time working with a compressor, be it a software version or a studio compressor, knows that most compressors, other than a few classic designs like the LA-2A or certain things that are just a couple knobs, typically will have uh, a great deal of control over the signal. The threshold will set at what point the compressor grabs the signal. Um, then you have a ratio that sets it what amount of uh, attenuation the compressor will do after it hits the threshold. Um, attack and release times can be set to how fast it grabs hold of it, how soon it lets go of it. Um, sometimes you can adjust the compression knee, which is kind of the angle at which, whether it's a sharp angle that it starts attenuation or if it has a softer round off. Um, all that stuff is great. And if you're compressing a variety of signals and want to have serious control over it, um, can be nice, but it also can be daunting, especially when you know, a guitar signal is going to be a little bit more uniform. You don't necessarily have to have, um, you'll probably find settings that work really well for guitar and leave it. Uh, and that's kind of what the case is with something like the tone press. Um, you don't have to worry about having a million controls to have uh, a great compressed guitar sound. It's really dialed in for guitar. The new tone press has a few little toggles that I'll talk about in a second, which give you more control over a, a few of the uh, speed settings uh, and kind of an EQ curve uh, but basically when you crank up the sustain that's the amount of compression that really is adjusting the threshold and uh, the ratio kind of varies depending on what the setting is but uh, you can go from setting the sustain low will give you uh, lower compression artifacts and and less of a squash sound as you crank it up you can really get that super squashed tone if you want it um, the volume you can either set as a boost uh, to actually push the front end of the amp harder 
turning sustain down, you can actually get a com uh, completely clean boost without compression artifacts. Um, or you can set it so that your compressed signal is similar to that of your uncompressed signal. Using the blend control, you can dial it all the way to 100% compressed signal, so you have a very similar compressor to most two-knob guitar compressors like the Dynacomp. Or you can dial it somewhere at 50%. You can crank it way down, so you're getting a lot of your uncompressed signal and then bringing the compressed signal in underneath uh, where the phase will be correct no matter what the settings so you don't have to worry about any kind of phase issues. Uh, the two little toggles which are new uh, from the original version of the Tone Press, the toggle on the left gives you two speed settings. Uh, inside is the the classic response and to the outside or to the left will give you a fast setting. Uh, the fast setting is really about how quickly the compressor lets go so it can have time to react to the next signal, um, I believe, is how that's working. Don't quote me on that. But essentially what it does is uh, it gives you, it gives the compressor time to let the transients of the next, uh, next notes through. So setting it to the fast setting will actually give you more percussive articulation. If you want it punchier and you want the the transients and the top end to punch through harder, um, the fast setting works really well for that. Uh, on the inside, on the on the switch on the right hand side, if you switch it to the left or to the inside, again is the classic response. Switching it to the right adds a, a it, I think he calls it brilliance. It's a brilliance EQ curve. It just adds a little bit of top end uh, to brighten up especially if you're using like overwound guitar pickups or high output, you know, if your amp is really dark or your guitar is dark, uh, it can really help to uh, liven things up a little bit. Um, you know, a compression can sometimes give the effect of, of ro rolling off some top end, especially when the transients are being grabbed and taken away. So a lot of the attack sometimes feels softened. Uh, so if you want more of the, the sharper attack, you can, get some of it back with this. I believe the effects of both of these are kind of lessened as you dial in more of your dry tone. So like if you have the blend control way down, uh, these are really subtle. Uh, but as you crank it up, uh, it can really help to bring back some punch if you want. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can do in this box from like really affected, heavy compressed squashed sounds to really transparent compression, uh, things where you can get really long sustain uh, where your guitar amp and amp act as if react as if you have some gain on your amp but where it's still completely clean but you have all the uh, sustain and response that you get from a, a driven amp uh, or you can do a completely clean boost with no compression whatsoever uh, we'll go through and listen to all of those sounds and I'll even go through the, uh, the I think there's about five suggested settings on on the Barber Electronics site of, of different things. So I'll actually go through and, and demonstrate each one of those so you can have an idea of, of what uh, David's um, suggested settings are. So let's go have a listen to that. All right, so let's go through some of the sounds on the tone press. Uh, I'm going to start off with everything uh, at 12 o'clock and I'll kind of flip some switches and talk about what I'm doing. And then, then we'll go through, Dave's got a couple of his suggested settings on the in the manual of the tone press. So I'll go through and um, set those up so you can hear what those sound like too. Uh, just playing the Strat through the deluxe reverb. So here's the clean bypass tone. And turning on the tone press. It's very transparent at these settings. Um, there's plenty of headroom if you want to boost the volume to dry, you know, push the front of the amp a little bit. And if you're dialing in more of your clean tone or dry tone, uncompressed tone with a blend knob, turn that down. You don't have a whole lot in the way of compression artifacts sounds like a really nice chimey version of your tone um, 
I know there's quite a few people who use that as an always-on kind of pedal and have been since the early versions of the tone press. But let's go into some more extreme settings. So here we have the um, brilliant setting on normal and the it's a classic, the classic compressor curve on that, that subtlety switch. So I'm gonna crank up the sustain a bit, crank up the compression and also blend in a little bit more. So you hear it squash some more. So if you really want that super squashed uh, Dynacomp kind of effect of compression, you can certainly get it. This is its most extreme settings. compressor come back in and kind of swell in again that's really using it as an effect um, and you lose a lot of the transients because it's the compressors uh, kicking in um, that way so uh, we can if we switch to the fast setting and then putting the brilliant switch on so that'd be the most extreme settings of this. Um, let me bring it back into somewhere where I typically would use it. Um, one thing I use this for a lot is slide, especially if you're trying to do clean slide. If you've got some drive on your amp uh, and your amp can react and, and uh, sustain is one thing, but if you're trying to do like a like Lowell Georgie kind of clean strat style slide, um, this is with it off, you know. Um, you know, the note doesn't have a lot of time um, before it dies off. So I'm gonna keep a little bit of the dry signal in so I get the attack, crank up the sustain, and the brilliance is on and fast is on. And that note really lasts a lot longer. Here's what the the uh, standard setting, not, not the fast attack time. really reacts like your amp is driven. You have all that, that bloom and the sustain behind you. Um, but if you really want that sustain, but you don't want that heavy squish compressor sound, you just dial in a lot more of your dry tone and still crank that up and you, you still get all the attack without the squish. But the compressor then pulls in from behind and and fills it up. So you can either do the really compressed squish thing for an effect, or you can still get all the punch and the clarity and the attack of your guitar, uh, but just really increase the, the sustain, um, which is a lot more like you would find in using a studio compressor if you really fiddle with the knobs, but this makes it about as easy as it can be. Uh, so let's go through and listen to some of Dave's settings. Uh, the first one he has is called Magic Dust for Single Coils. Um, it's got the volume at 2.30, the blend at 11 o'clock, and the sustain at 11 o'clock. So here it is without the, the tone press on.
great. Uh, finished guitar compressor volume at 2 o'clock. Right there. Blend at 5 o'clock. I'm going to crank that way up. And uh, sustain at noon. So this is sustain about halfway up, but we've got the, the blend pretty much fully on the compressor side without blending any uh, dry signal. So it's going to squish a lot. So this is what you might get from like a Dynacomp kind of sound. Compared to bypass. It's a much more uh, a traditional guitar compressor kind of uh, tone there. Okay, Class A Clean Boost. So we're going to be using this without any compression artifacts, just the Clean Boost. Uh, he has the volume at 5 o'clock, uh, which is cranked up pretty high. Uh, clean, uh, I mean the blend is all the way off at 5 o'clock, or at 7 o'clock, and the sustain is inactive all the way down. I'll turn the brilliance off. So here we are bypassed, and here it is as a clean boost. What happens if we uh, turn on the brilliance? great just driving the amp without any squash or artifacts from that uh, clean with great sustain uh, volume at three o'clock and the blend at noon sustain at three and we'll turn the brilliance back off so clean with great sustain <laughs> Yep, does exactly that. Let's uh, just hear what that sounds like with the fast engaged and the brilliance on. All right, light and loud, volume at four. Put the switches back. Uh, blend at 9.30. It's going to be a lot of your uh, dry, uncompressed signal, and the stand at 11:30. So um, this is going to be closer to that Class A clean boost, but with just a, a little bit of compression uh, artifacts mixed in. So uh, here it is, off and on. So yeah, well, a lot like the clean boost, but then just a little bit more squish and sustain with a compressor. And uh, last is what he calls heavy rubber. Volume at 3 o'clock. Uh, we're going to do the blend at 2.30. Uh, so a lot more compression. And sustain at 4. Crank that up quite a bit. And we'll uh, leave it in the traditional switches. So here it is with it off. And on. It's really driving the front of that deluxe.
So a lot of really great sounds in there, uh, whether you want the super squished, uh, compressed, affected tone, or if you're just looking for moderate compression with a push or just a kind of chime up uh, and add some sustain to your clean tone. Obviously works great with um, a little drive too. Uh, I use this a lot for slide playing. Uh, I use it for moderate uh, compression and a little bit of a push. Uh, I, I kind of prefer it to just using a straight clean boost a lot of the times. Uh, so the Tone Press, the new smaller footprint version, um, I have since retired my other one or just left it in the studio for other times. But uh, uh, I've used this for a long time. I really like the added little switches to give me some um, like faster attack and, and add a little brilliance for certain guitars. You don't really need that brilliance on a guitar like this, the brighter guitars, but if I'm using humbuckers or higher output pickups, it really is nice to have that, that added feature. Mm -hmm. 